Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art and culture, and this is Billboard Breakdown. Well, here we are folks, we're back. Welcome for our third year of Billboard Breakdown. Year three, covering the Billboard year of 2017, and man alive, I'm hoping it's gonna be better than the disaster of mediocrity that was 2016. We'll be covering more of that near the end of December during the year-end list, but until then, let's focus on this year ahead, and I gotta say, if we're gonna start it off like this, I got a really good feeling going forward. It's not a perfect feeling by any stretch of the mind, but overall, yeah, there's a lot to get excited about here. Of course, when I say that I'm not really talking about the top 10, which barely shifted at all in comparison with last week, Black Beatles by Ray Shimmer featuring Gucci Mane solidified its hold on number one courtesy of dominance in streaming, sales, and sizable gains on radio and YouTube. Honestly, it's always kind of a crapshoot seeing how long some of these viral smashes hold on. Black Beatles it looks like it's got some staying power, for better or for worse. Granted, part of the situation is that it's got so little competition. Closer by the Chainsmokers featuring Halsey held on to number two thanks to continued airplay dominance, sizable streaming in YouTube, but that airplay, it's starting to slip and the sales are not getting any better. I would probably give more of a chance to Starboy by The Weeknd and Daft Punk at number three with better sales, streaming gains, solid YouTube, but it honestly might have peaked early on the radio and I'm not sure how the release of the album in a couple of days will revitalize its position. And that's kind of relevant considering Side to Side by Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj is making a play here. Rising up to number four, with major airplay traction, huge YouTube streaming gains. Again, it'll need more sales to be seriously competitive, but if it picks up more traction, there's some potential there. And a jump past Heathens by 21 Pilots, which slid down to number five, as it spent the week losing everything. Only this high courtesy of residual airplay inertia. Now this takes us to 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars, which somehow clung on to number six, mostly thanks to good sales, mostly solid radio, and even a bit of streaming traction. I suspect when the album release impacts the charts, it will surge next week. Either way, it's holding up over Let Me Love You by DJ Snake and Justin Bieber, which fell down to number seven as it started to burn off airplay fast, along with some weaker sales and stumbling on streaming. Now, this would give Juju on that beat by Zayn McCall and Zay Hilfiger a chance to get higher from number eight, but that song's losing streaming too, and the sales are pretty shaky. Without radio to stall it out, it might start to drop pretty soon. And then there's Broccoli by Drum featuring Lil Yachty. Again, huge streaming at number nine, but but airplay and sales are dropping, which is not a good sign going forward. And finally, we have Don't Wanna Know by Maroon 5 featuring Kendrick Lamar. And sadly, we might not get rid of this anytime soon, considering it's got radio momentum, picked up a small boost on streaming, and for some ungodly reason, people are still buying this. But fine, the top 10 remained pretty static this week. What about our losers and dropouts? Well, we had a fair few of them in the latter category, and I'm not exactly complaining here. Losing sits still look pretty by Dea, I Know Somebody by Low Cash, Gangsta by Kehlani, No Limit by Usher and Young Thug, and Money Longer by Lil Uzi Vert? That's a net positive, even if they took Million Reasons by Lady Gaga and Hold Up by Beyonce with them. As for our losers, well, outside of Country having a really bad week, most of the rest are pretty acceptable. I'm not complaining Setting Fires by the Chainsmokers and Xylo fell to 86, or My Way by Calvin Harris fell to 74, or Pen Pineapple Apple Pen by Pico Tara burned out to 90. Or after that big debut last week, used to this by Future and Drake collapsed to 31. Now for country, a bit more of a mixed bag there. On the one hand, it's not exactly a good sign that Vice by Miranda Lambert slid down to 84 before the album drops, but going down with her, a better man by Little Big Town to 70, set the world on fire by Kenny Chesney and Pink to 58, and the best news of all, Move by Luke Bryan is down to 73. Again, net positive, but okay. What about our gains and returning entries? Again, bit of a mixed bag, but I think they're still a net positive overall. Yes, it kind of sucks that Bad Things by Machine Gun Kelly and Camilla Cabello continues to rise up to 46, but the rest here aren't bad. Wanna Be That Song by Brett Eldridge up to 64, that's not bad. Neither is Love on the Brain by Rihanna up to 50, or Love Me Now by John Ledger not up to 41, or even Mercy by Shawn Mendes up to 47. The only somewhat surprising case here is Hallelujah by Pentatonix picking up to 56, 
six, but combined with the fact it's on a Christmas album and the unfortunate passing of Leonard Cohen, it's to be expected. We'll be talking about that a little bit more later on, but looking at our returning entries, okay, the worst here is Rihanna's Sex With Me at 92, which is just painfully mediocre. The rest, actually pretty great, with Goosebumps by Travis Scott and Kendrick Lamar clawing its way back to 100, Shout Out To My Ex by Little Mix stepping up to 95, and Water Under The Bridge by Adele coming back to 94. It looks to be positioned as Adele's next big single, and while I might personally prefer River Lee, this is still a damn great song that I really like. I'm happy to see it back on the Hot 100. So okay, Overall, net positive in both losses and gains, with the top 10 remaining pretty static and stable, but hardly the worst it's been considering 2016. So can our new arrivals hold up the bill? Well, let's start off with number 99, Call On Me by Starly. Okay, question here. Did anybody else immediately think of Bill Withers' Lean On Me the second you listened through this? Because that's pretty much exactly what I did. And then I went back to re-listen to that song about a half dozen times. As you do, I could barely remember anything about Starly, an Australian singer who joins the ranks of charting artists with less of a social media presence than I do. And to be honest, her new song is pretty nondescript too. Sparse acoustic guitar that drops into a snap and bass beat, whirling tropical percussion that breaks into a particularly squeaky he dropped, and with the lyrics all about supporting someone, what it reminded me more of was Stand By You by Rachel Platten, which at least had the decency to build up some heavenly swell to it. This is just painfully generic, a mishmash of modern styles to a vaguely aspirational bent, which will be forgotten by effectively everyone the second you hear it, including me. Next, number 97, A Guy With A Girl by Blake Shelton. Looking over at you like, ain't she beautiful? I'm invisible. But I'll stand right there and smile You're right beside me Oh, and I see the same thing I see But I don't mind being the guy with the girl You know, I get the impression that Blake Shelton is in a distinctly awkward position right now in mainstream country, given that it's tilting back towards neo-traditional songs, and his last hit, She's Got Away With Words, got hammered pretty hard by critics and the public, missing that number one slot, which for Blake Shelton is usually expected. And so, he went for the safe bet. A song where he takes the backseat to the pretty girl that he's out with while dropping into obvious pro country checklist cliche mode. And really, that's pretty much all one can say about this. It looks a little bit clunkier than I'd prefer with that pause midway through in the melody, but the guitar melody is a little bit more prominent and I can actually hear the pedal steel for once, even if the percussion on that first verse and bridge is so obviously programmed. But what this song represents is a very safe bet, the sort of track that Blake Shelton will rely on country radio to push in on name recognition alone and certainly not anything else actually about the song. Let's hope the country radio doesn't take the bait, but let's be honest. They probably will. Number 77, We the People by A Tribe Called Quest. All you Mexicans, you must go. And all of you poor folks, you must go. Muslims and gays. Boy, we hate your ways. So all you bad folks, you must go. The last time A Tribe Called Quest crossed over to mainstream radio, 1998. 18 years ago. They've never cracked the top 40, and yet by some miracle, their final album has gone to number one on the Billboard 200, and a single has broken into the Hot 100. And it's not just a comeback single. The sort of immediately relevant political song that would never otherwise get in the Hot 100 against a sort of low grimy synths and drum sample from a Black Sabbath song. That's all kinds of awesome. And the content? Well, it's one of those cases where Q-Tip and Fife were looking to cram in as many pointed attacks as they possibly could, with Fife re-establishing rap dominance through strings of sports references, and Q-Tip seeming to target gentrification and crass commercialism, right to a bitterly sarcastic hook that strings together every single group the current president-elect has targeted or dismissed in the past, evicting them in the name of 
profit. And Q-Tip, he doesn't shy away from that temptation himself. It's some good framing here. Perhaps a reality show sporadically, as he describes, or the implied bad bitch that's trying to use him, which you can either search from being pretty literal all the way for a more liberal establishment seeking their own brand of profit out of him. It's a defiantly political song, and you might want to get used to that on this show, because even in the mainstream, and especially given the possible next four years in hip-hop's place in modern culture, you might hear a fair bit more of it, but the song is so ridiculously well-structured it'd be hard to criticize regardless of your political position. It's a damn great song. Definitely happens to be significantly interested in that final A Tribe Called Quests album. Might have to cover that in the next couple days. You never know. In the meantime, definitely happy to see this here. It most certainly deserves it. Number 76, Bad and Bougie by Migos featuring Lil Uzi Vert. Cry me river, give you a tissue. Bad and bougie, bad. Cooking up dope with a Uzi. My niggas are savage, ruthless. We got thudders and hunter rounds too. My bitch is bad and bougie, bad. Cooking up dope with a Uzi. My niggas are savage, ruthless. We got thudders and hunter rounds too. So, do you know that Migos, they've got a new album coming up called Culture? Honestly, I've stopped caring. Look, I covered Young Rich Nation back last year in 2015, and I didn't find it particularly interesting or thrilling outside of isolated songs. So, hopping on board with a Lil Uzi Vert for your lead off single, not a good sign. Hell, Takeoff isn't even on this track. And it's not like any of these guys are bringing a lot of intensity outside of the monotone triplets that have been their trademark. And of course, the content is not interesting or unique or remotely new if you've heard a Migos song before. The most is Quavo asking to be called Quavo Ratatouille because he's still mixing up the cocaine, the pots and pans. In other words, he's comparing himself favorably to a cartoon rat. Now that's not to dismiss the endeavors of cartoon rats. The Great Mouse Detective and Rescuers Down Under are in my top five favorite Disney movies of all time. But if that's the most interesting thing on a song that attempts to fuse into hashtag rap with a triplet flow, that's a real problem. I'm sorry. And yet, at least Migos knows how to ride this flow. Lil Uzi Bird keeps slipping off the beat and trying to throw in some vocal improvisations to make his very simplified delivery work. And man, how embarrassing must it be to fail at being a Migos wannabe? But all that, it obscures the biggest issue of it all. The production is just boring as hell. The inert piano line, flat trap snares, sparse bass, it's clear that Metro Boom would just phone this one in at best. But again, just like 2016, it feels like this is the sort of song that'll be here for a week or two at most, then gone in a couple days. And while there have been entirely too many exceptions to that rule, Let's just hope that 2017 leaves both these acts behind in the dust. Next, number 69, Me and Your Mama by Childish Gambino. So Donald Glover has been having a bit of a crazy year. He got cast as Lando in the Young Han Solo movie because obvious fantastic costing is obvious. His excellent show Atlanta took off because, again, obvious. And to top it off, we're getting a new Childish Gambino album near the end of this year, where there was a very real chance we'd never see another Childish Gambino album. Now, of course, I'll be covering it when it drops properly. It's been three years since Because of the Internet. I guarantee this will lead to an interesting conversation. But how is this his lead-off single? Honestly, if... It's something, I'll give it that, and pretty hard to describe too. Starts off with a slow build of squealing synths, playing off staccato backing vocals and a lullaby-esque piano tone as the trap beat subtly grows, until it breaks into this scuzzy blues guitar and bass line, the full gospel swell and Charles Gambino howling his lungs out, and then it seems to ease back into warbles of synth, more elegant swells and a lit quiv electric guitar against the stutter of drums, sleigh bells, organ, and the growling bass. And well, I can definitely trace the lineage of this sort of sound, it really doesn't sound like anything that Childish Gambino has ever done before. And I honestly wish I liked it more. I think it's an issue of the tempo. If the track had been played with a little bit more urgency or a quicker pace, it might connect a little bit better for me. As it is, I like the ideas, I like the concepts, I'm definitely intrigued about the album even more so, but this isn't quite working for me just yet. I'll appreciate it more than I actually like it, but it's interesting though, I'll definitely say that. And if it's your thing, I totally get why, so check it out. And finally, number 59, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know 
that this song, until this song, until this moment, Leonard Cohen had never had a charting hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Makes sense in a sort of way. His songwriting always seemed to transcend pop frivolities that you'd see in the Hot 100. But even Bob Dylan, he had a slew of top 10 hits to his name. Hell, most people my age are probably more familiar with the Jeff Buckley or Rufus Rainwright or God Help You, the Pentatonix covers of the song than the original. And believe me, there's a definitely a part that's annoyed very deeply that Pentatonix version of the song is charting higher than this. But also a part of me that knows that Leonard Cohen would never have even cared. As such, what can I even say about a classic? You can make credible arguments that the original Hallelujah is one of the best songs of all time, and I'd probably support some of them. One of the most sober and reasoned encounters with questions of faith ever set to music. The smoky guitar strums, the firm bass line, the gorgeously balanced gospel choir, the hints of gleaming piano, Leonard Cohen's deep bass vocals that are untouchable, all combined with the lyricism that aims to capture that transcendent moment that draws forth the words when confronting a power so far above your own. In other words, while I know some would consider it kind of unfair to put a song that's over 30 years old as the best of the week, and believe me, A Tribe Called Quest did put up a significant contest and would have run away with it in any other time, but hallelujah, it's it's taken it. It's a classic again. Worst, Migos and Little Uzi for Bad and Bougie, more for being sloppy, tedious, and overdone than anything else, but I don't even want to think about that. Leonard Cohen's hallelujah is just so damn good. But overall, this week, it started off pretty damn strong. Let's hope that's a sign for 2017, because we could use more stuff like this right about now. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Billboard Breakdown on Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.